Hello, I'm Anastasia Zmankova and you watch Fairfoot TV. Today we're going to introduce you a legal scholar and a historian from Victoria, Canada, Benjamin Isid. He visited Vladivostok uh, to give a lecture in School of Humanitarian Studies and also School of Regional and International Studies and of course for launching of his book in Russian edition. All of that you can hear from the Benjamin interview. Have a good look. This is my fifth time in Vladivostok. The first time was about six years ago. I was in touch with a colleague in Canada, a specialist in Russian history, who connected me with some scholars at the uh, Institute of History of the Russian Academy of Science. And on my next visit, I was able to connect with the Center for Canadian and American Studies here at FEFU. And on every visit since, I've been hosted uh, very graciously by the Humanities School and I've given a number of guest lectures, attended a conference here, and now I'm here for the launch. The book looks at Canadian responses to the Russian Revolution, uh, looking at the response of the Canadian government sending soldiers here to Vladivostok as part of the Allied intervention. It also looks at responses within Canadian society, particularly the response of the labour movement and some farmer groups who opposed uh, Canada's intervention in the Civil War. And then it looks at uh, the expedition following the soldiers, the 4,000 soldiers who sailed across the Pacific from Victoria to Vladivostok, and looks at some of their experiences, both uh, in Vladivostok itself, but also in the surrounding area and on the railroad into the interior. Today I gave uh, a lecture, the same lecture to the Humanitarian School and also to the School of Regional and, and International Relations, uh, looking at the political history of Canada since 1867. So it's kind of an overview, looking at some of the main themes uh, and trends within Canada's political system, and also the interaction between different social groups in Canada and the Canadian government. So it looked at the early formative phase of Canada, uh, the expansion across the West, uh, some of the tensions caused by immigration and urbanization and industrialism. It looked at uh, independent uh, farmer uh, and labor movements within politics uh, and then looked at the last 50 years and some of the big issues around social policy, uh, foreign policy, also the aspirations of the Quebec uh, people within Canada. So, and really uh, ended with sort of some recent debates over Canada's energy policy and also environmental issues. To be honest, I've been so busy getting ready for this trip, I haven't paid as much attention to the Olympic Games as I would like. Uh, I do like uh, hockey in the, the Olympic Games. I think Russia and Canada both have excellent teams. Well, we hosted the last Olympic Games in British Columbia in my province. So uh, there will be the, the legacy, I think, for tourism and with some of the new infrastructure. Uh, but ultimately, life goes on after an Olympic Games and things return to normal very rapidly. It's beautiful. To see this campus built in just a handful of years is really remarkable. Uh, I was first on Russian Island six years ago uh, when I traveled by boat uh, from the ferry in downtown Vladivostok to the far side of the island just across behind the medical center. Um, so to see the island transformed, it's fairly remarkable. Um, and definitely the vistas around the harbor and also the natural areas that are left in the heart of campus are very beautiful. So I look forward to returning soon. There's real commonalities wherever you go in the world. I find the Russian students are very inquisitive. Uh, excellent questions. So I think there's a very high level of awareness among your student body. Um, so I wouldn't say they're better or worse than Canadian students, but definitely a very intelligent students here on this campus. Thank you, Benjamin, for such an interesting interview. We hope we will see you here soon again. Bye. Smart Rite Fefu TV.